Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make these wonderful flavoured gins. These are going to be a Christmas present, but they're perfect for birthday presents or for your own indulgence. The first things we need to do though, is take the jars that you're actually going to make it in. I'm going to choose this one, it's Christmassy and these are Christmas presents. And we're going to sterilise them. Now with these jars, anything you need to do is make sure they're sterilised by steam. So we're going to put a little bit of water in here. And then we're going to put it in a cold oven and heat the oven up to 120 degrees and keep it at 120 degrees for five minutes. This will mean that most of this water turns to steam, killing off any of the narcissists around it and make it a sterilised jar. So whilst that's in the oven, I'm going to tell you how you actually do this. So these are the three flavoured gins that I've made. They're going to be together as a little present for Christmas. I've made three flavours. This one is rhubarb and ginger. This one is raspberry and this one is blackberry. So the way of making them is actually identical for each of them. So what you need to do is you take the fruit, in this case raspberry I'm going to show you, and you literally put it in an airtight jar with the gin and leave it to stand for five or six weeks until it's infused all the flavour. So I've just got this out of the oven, it's nicely sterilised, you can see there's no more water left in it, a tiny amount. What I'm going to do next is literally put all the fruit in the jar. Doesn't matter if it's a bit squishy, as long as it's all in there, it'll all just infuse nicely. And because these bottles, and I want to make two of them, these bottles take 175 ml, so I'm going to measure out 350 ml for me of the gin. It can be any gin, I've just used the cheapest one that I could find. Um, I'm just measuring it out there for 350ml, hoping that it'll cover all the raspberries, which it does nicely. And there we go. Excellent. Literally, once you close the lid, and leave in the dark cupboard five to six weeks. Maybe turning it occasionally, stirring up a little bit, making sure that it's nice and mixed in. So this gin has now been infusing for about six weeks and you can see it's a lovely pink colour as all the flavour has gone in from the raspberries. So I'm just going to show you now how we make the final product. So we've got the bottles for it to go into and we've got various jugs and funnels to put it into the bottle. We've also got a selection here of sieves. So obviously we need to get the fruit out and this is just a normal food, food sieve to get the fruit out in the first place. But then to get the more of the sediment and everything else out, what I used to use was a little tea strainer. Use this in, with a funnel straight into the bottle. But my husband has bought me a food filter to do this very job. So it's, a, it's actually it's like a muslin. You can also do that as well. So you could use a muslin cloth to actually filter it. But I'm just going to use this filter. But first thing, first thing we need to do is literally just sieve the fruit and the whole gin into a big jug. You can see what a beautiful colour it is looking now. And weirdly, the raspberries themselves will seem to have lost their colour as it's all gone into the, the gin. So I'm just going to get the most out of this, squish the, the fruit down, and use that there. Now one thing I'm going to suggest with this fruit, you don't want to waste it, it's really boozy still, you won't get all the gin out of it, so I'm going to make a boozy fruit crumble with mine, which I'll be strictly for the adult, but something that will be really tasty after your Sunday lunch. So there we go, so just sip gently until you've got everything out of there, you can see, look how beautiful that looks now. Just save the, the fruit for another day. So you can already see just how beautiful this looks, how pink it is, but you can also see, well I can, the various little bits in there, which is why I'm going to filter it again. Like I said beforehand, I just used a little tea strainer, but I'm going to use this food filter specifically for the job. And I'm going to put it in here because this is actually easier to pour from than this. Bit of luck, you should be able to see as we filter it in 
but there will be some leftover residue which you don't really want to get into your gin and while we're waiting for that to go through to prepare these bottles what I've actually done is wash them very very thoroughly and I've also put some steaming hot water boiling hot water in there to give them a bit of a steam through they are cool now um, and obviously everything is obviously very nice and clean but look if you can see in here you can see all the bits that they've got out from this this gin so we're at the stage now well, we're literally just filling the bottle, so I've got this very cute, very handy little filter, little funnel. I'm just going to carefully fill these up. Right, there we go. So literally, just then, uh, that is it. And you could label these, clearly. Well, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to put them in my little gift bag. Christmas gift bag and make it Christmassy using pine cones and dried orange segments. And then that just looks really good. And there you go. Self-infused flavoured gin.